Hmm. Hey guys, welcome back to Beast Quest. Uh, series 25, book 3, Galaki the... Uh, Blacky, uh, Gla yeah, Glacky Spear of the Deaths. So here we are again, ladies and gentlemen. We're never continuing on the series of Series 25 of Beast Quest. We're almost through. I've got the two remaining books. First of those two is Glacky. Uh, we are going to do the final two reviews. Uh, I don't know if I'll get through. Um, I think I'll get through both the books today. Maybe we'll see. But Glacky, we're up first. I'm just checking my notes to make sure I am good to go. Uh, this should be... I'm just my numbers to make sure it's search. It must be Series 25. Yeah, it's Series 25. Just double checking just to be sure. You never know. Uh, but yeah. So, Glacky. Uh, not wasting any time, like always. in depth story analysis and then my overall thoughts on this epic adventure. So without further addition or ado, let's get to it. Glacky, uh, the sea, uh, Spear of the Deaths. So, starting off. Uh, so yeah, like I said one more time, if you haven't already, make sure you've read the book before watching this review, unless you don't care. That being said, let's get to this. Tom and friends were... Tom and friends... Yeah, Tom and friends here... Yeah, Tom and friends... Uh, Tom and friends here were listening to a story from Queen Aroha about how the jewels were, were worn on a crown in the past, and there was a curse which affected Zargon. Now, he wants the jewels, I'm guessing, to restore his kingdom. Also, our hero is still having a watchful eye on Yara. Still not, not sure if they can trust her or not. Next morning, our heroes arrive at the moat surrounding the prison, and inside was Glacky, you know, the, uh, the sea beast. Uh, so our heroes plan to make a raft to cross the ocean. Or I should say the moat, because that's basically... It's, it's like a big, it's a massive moat of water. So while Tom and Yara went one way, Eleanor and Aroa went the other, which gave Tom an opportunity to question Yara to see if he could figure her out, but it just led to a dead end. However, they found a boat, a ha they found a boat, then the and they regrouped and rejoined, so all the, all the companions were together once again with this boat, and they ro had to row it across the moat until they encountered a, a whirlpool. Our heroes used all their effort to escape the vortex, however they encountered some eels who damaged their boat, forcing our team to swim to the to a not distant island inside the moat. In yeah, inside the moat island. So in, there's a, a little island was inside a little island was in bleh, a little island, there we go, was inside the moat and they had to swim to that island. However, they all made it uh, they made it bleh, they all made it ashore Apart from Eleanor, of course, who is missing. Eleanor was trapped under trapped under recently forged ice. However, you know ice over the moat, so Tom had to go. Tom had to go and rescue her. He broke it. They freed her, saved her, and soon she made a recovery. Then later, our heroes encountered some mushrooms, which didn't seem poisonous to them. However, later on, our team get into an argument. Even Aroa was a part of it, with them drawing their weapons on each other. And I'm wondering, did the mushrooms do anything to them? Everyone fought one another, and of course, after a bit of confusion, Tom realised it was the mushrooms. So Tom um, threw himself and the Queen into the water, which washed off the effects of the spores. They did the same for Yara and Eleanor, so the group continued on. However, later, they, uh, Tom was snagged under the water by the Spear of the Deaths, Glacky. Tom thought this was his end, Now he, as the beast was about to kill him. Tom was saved by Eleanor, and the beast rose, warning our, he warning our heroes to back off. Then later, Glacky sh showed his powers. First, he could forge weapons from ice. Then after, because he shot our, like ice arrows. After our heroes tried to figure out a plan to lure Glacky out of the moat, the beast summoned a tsunami. At this point, I realized this wasn't a manta ray, but some kind of serpent-looking centipede. An aquatic version of Skolo slash Tremor, if you will. Um, that's what Glacky looks like to me. The tsunami caught our heroes and knocked out Aroha. She became a hostage for Glacky, and Tom mounted a rescue using his makeshift harpoon he made, and he impaled it on Glacky. And with the help of Yara and Eleanor, they lured Glacky to shore. Now weaker than ever, however, Aroha was still motionless, and our heroes worried she might be dead. Glacky died from mortal due to, I'm guessing, being on land and the the injury of the harpoon, makeshift harpoon, was fatal. However, Eleanor brought her back to, brought her back because she was back to consciousness. 
while Yara attempted to uh, while Yara attempted to take the jewels and leave her queen for dead. But the queen questioned what was going on. Tom and Eleanor finally tried to question. Yeah, Tom and Eleanor tried to finally get it through to Aroha that Yara wasn't to be trusted. However, this for some reason the queen didn't listen and told the our duo to go back home to Avantia while her and Yara would finish the quest. But Tom wasn't gonna do that because something he knew something was up and he intended to figure out what it was. So that's where our story technically lands off. It's just like a, um, a cliffhanger type thing, which makes sense because the series not done yet. But so we still get we still don't get a full answer of who or what's going on with Yara. Is she trustworthy? Is she not? What's going on with her? Why is she acting so shifty? Why does she want the jewels so bad? We still don't know. But we have this other mystery going on now of Aroha. Why is she acting so suspicious about trusting trusting our heroes? So there is that other mystery going on there too. Um. So yeah. Um, let's go like always, we're gonna go, there was, a, there was my analysis of, uh, Glacky, the Fear of the Depths, a few st scuffles here and there, but nothing too major. Uh, starting off with the characters, Tom, as the main character with a lot of pressure on his shoulders, and for this one, he, he and Eleanor are, are basically questioning Yara's judgement throughout the story, uh, as the, yeah, and now it goes on to this book too. So Tom, uh, he's, Tom himself right now, he's getting himself torn by the beast with sneak attacks and then he has to go and rescue Eleanor at a point and then the Queen gets in danger so yeah a lot of pressure once again builds up on uh, Tom's mind which makes sense again he's a pressurized hero Eleanor she does get much to do but she still helps uh, drive her point home she's the most unwilling of to trust Yara and uh, she most likely the one to shout at her first so even though she doesn't get much to do, which, when she does have her moments to shine, she does help out. Because um, she did save uh, Tom at one point in the book. Um, Aroha, this is an interesting part for her. Aroha's always been the one to calm the group back down to level so they can continue on the quest. But here she's starting to change her personality. Now it could be due to the effect of the mushrooms or something. Or maybe she hit her head from her encounter with Glacky. But after, in the very end of the book... When they start to tell the Queen about, like, oh, you can't trust Yara, she's on Yara's side and offending her and stuff. So um, it's really off, because, like, you see her actions. So there's a lot of Yara we don't know about, and that's what's questioning us. Like, a lot of Yara we don't know about. And maybe maybe Queen Aroa knows her more. Maybe she does. Um, but from what we see, we don't... I, there's some in, there's some missing information going on. Why would Aroa do this? So I hopefully that gets answered in the final book of this of this uh, series. Um, so yeah, Aroa is a very interesting character in this book, which is very. I am very happy they did that. It's nice to give uh, a minor character this much development. So it, I appreciate that. Moving on to Yara herself. Now it is hard to get a grasp on her character because again, it's her mystery arc. We have to figure out what whose side she's on. Is she good? Is she evil? What's going on? Why is she so determined to get the jewels? Hmm. So yeah, it's hard to really get a grasp of her. Uh, so I can't really say much about her, but you know, she's pretty much the stereotypical I keep to herself type of girl. Uh, she's willing to take the jewels anytime she gets. If she's questioned or judged, she'll stand up for herself. So yeah. So it's all a bit shady from Yara, which kind of makes sense because you don't get her full development till the last book, I'm guessing. So that's respectable. Um, moving on to Galaki himself, this beast is kind of a powerhouse and kind of not because he doesn't give Tom a break. He goes, he waits for a sneak a sneak attack, and then he'll take the hero. And then when he when the heroes know he's there, he will he will go at the heroes full force, not holding back at all. Ice arrows and then tsunami make sure they stay down and then he'll use hostages so he's once he's been spotted he will go full force on their enemies that's how he works that's how he operates he gets beaten pretty easily with a simple harpoon and then he's uh, it only takes three humans to uh, stir his course onto land and then he dies of mortal injuries um and again i thought at first he was a manta ray because you only see the big fin like around his head but actually that's part of his serpentine looking body. So he's more of a centipede, like serpent type of underwater beast. So there's that. So he's more like um, Skolo or Tremor. But it is pretty cool to have an aquatic version of that beast in the in the story. So I appreciate it. Anyway guys, that's my thoughts on Glacky Spear of the Depths. 
Is it the best book of the series? I think the uh, I think the like Hackster may have done it better. Me personally, I think. But it is nice to see some progression a bit further here. So yeah, I am looking forward to the wrap up of this series and see how we how, where Yara's character lies. So stay tuned for the final book of this series, which is just once again getting it up. Uh, you know, let's see. Um, Diprox. Uh, what's the title there? Picking up the uh, it's Diprox. The uh, no Diprox. The, yeah. I keep saying it multiple times, so I, I say it multiple times because I'm trying to pronounce it right. Die Prox, the Buzzing Terror. Till next time, guys, I'll see you for that book, and you'll see more videos from me later today, whether they be re-uploads videos from Rambo Rapper Life's channel, or LEGO DC Superman's custom builds. I do need to make sure to get them out as well, and maybe you'll see the final Beast Quest book of Series 25. We shall see. Till next time, like always, thank you so much for watching, and like always, peace.